Is the recovery of soft tissue materials associated with fossils evidence that the Earth is young? Without question, one of the most exciting discoveries in paleontology in the last couple of decades has been the consistent recovery of soft tissue materials from fossils that date anywhere from tens of millions to even hundreds of millions of years in age. Uh, for example, in 2004, Mary Schweitzer, a paleontologist at NC State in the United States, reported in a femur of a T. rex specimen that was 68 million years in age, the recovery of blood vessels, red blood cells, osteoclasts, which are bone cells, as well as heme, which is the material that binds oxygen and hemoglobin, and collagen fibers were all recovered from this fossil specimen. This type of discovery is exciting for paleontologists because it gives them another dimension into the biology of organisms that lived in Earth's past. But young Earth creationists argue that these discoveries provide evidence that the Earth must only be about 6,000 years old. And the way their argument goes is something like this, that there's absolutely no way these soft tissue materials could survive for thousands of years, let alone tens of millions of years or even hundreds of millions of years. Therefore, the radiometric dating techniques used to date the fossils at these ages must be flawed and therefore, the Earth must only be 6,000 years old. And the best way to explain the fossil record is the result of a global flood catastrophe only a few thousand years ago. Now, how do I respond to this claim as an old Earth creationist? Well, the first point that I would make is this, that there's no reason to think by analyzing the biblical text that it demands that the earth is young. For example, we could look at day and understand day to be a period of time as opposed to being 24 hours. Also, there's absolutely no reason to think that radiometric dating techniques are flawed. That means that these techniques are giving accurate ages for fossils that date, again, tens of millions of years or even hundreds of millions of years in age. So then how can we explain the survival of soft tissue materials? It is true that these materials tend to decompose rather quickly, but there are ways in which we can explain their persistence in fossils. The first point that we need to make, though, is this, that what's being recovered from these remains are not the original blood vessels and red blood cells and collagen proteins, but rather remnants of these materials that have undergone chemical alteration as a result of the high temperatures and high pressures associated with the fossilization process. Also, the materials that are being recovered are highly durable materials that we would expect to be able to survive for significant periods of time. For example, Blood vessels are designed to withstand high pressures that result when blood is pumped through the circulatory system. The same design features that give blood vessels the ability to withstand high pressures also make them highly durable materials that give them the capacity to survive for vast periods of time after the death of the organism. Or collagen fibers are highly cross-linked, which is a chemical property that, again, ensures their durability. Now, how then is it that these materials can still survive for vast periods of time, even though they are highly durable? Well, it turns out that there are two competing processes in play. One is the decomposition of these materials. The other is a mechanism that prevents these materials from undergoing further breakdown. And this is essentially mineralization of these soft tissue materials that leads to an entombment or an encapsulation of these materials in mineral in a mineral layers. This encapsulation process arrests or slows down the degradation of these materials, allowing them to survive for tens of millions, even hundreds of millions of years. We have a really good understanding for how these materials could survive for vast periods of time. If you want to know more about this remarkable uh, insight from paleontology involving soft tissue materials, I invite you to take a look at my book, Dinosaur Blood and the Age of the Earth.